In the last video, we were able to get the session parameters required to start making posts on Reddit. So we were able to save our username and actually log in and then save the mod hash and save the cookie. And these are all the things that we need to be able to post post to Reddit or be able to reply to comments or actually post comments on Reddit. Now what we can do is actually work on actually how we're going to be posting the comments. So if we look at a comment thread and um, when we click on a comment, we get this dialog box popping up. But right now we have no way to actually reference what comment that is. So each one of these comments has something called a comment ID and what we can do is retrieve that and then reference it when we want to leave a comment. So what we'll do is we'll go into main activity now and we're going to go down to the um, init method I believe it is. So right here in init and we're going to have to add one thing here. Um, I'm actually going to comment this out. We don't need to take a look at that but um, yeah so we're actually going to have to add one thing. I'm not sure if I added the ID I think I might have let's just uh, let's see I'll copy this go next line get doesn't look like I have a get ID here so let's go up to the entries up here and go entries oops forgot to do a comma entries dot get the index and then get oh, I do have a get ID method here so that's good um, but it doesn't look like it's incorporated into post yet. So we're going to need to store these IDs. So let's go into post and we're going to create a new parameter here. We're going to go private string ID and we're going to add it to, actually, you know what? I could just delete that and I'll insert a new one and select all of these. And I got a YouTube comment. Hey, we're talking about authentication. I think I just went over that. All right, so I just quickly answered that guy's question. Let's get back to the tutorial. Okay, so insert the getter and setter methods for ID. So now our post object class will be able to hold that ID parameter, and we see that red goes away there. And I'm going to copy this, and I'm going to put it right here, and that should be good. So now let's go down, and we can actually get the ID here, and I'm going to say post underscore ID. And then we're going to go into our strings file and we need to add that. So copy the post updated string, go next line and let's save this as post ID. Well, what happened there? Uh, I deleted the string. There we go. And post ID. Okay, that's good. And so now this will actually submit this to our comments activity so we can retrieve it with our get intent method, which is in init post, I think. Yeah, so here's where we're going to get the ID. So we'll go post ID equals incoming intent. Oh, I forgot to create that variable, but I'll do that in a second here. So get string extra, and we'll go at string post ID. And whoops, not post ID zero. And then we'll go up to the top, and we need to create that, uh, that variable. So I'll copy that line and do post ID. So I'll just do post ID. There we go. Now let's go back down. And so now we'll have the post ID in here. And do I actually display it? No. Let's go back to main activity and I want to make sure that I add it to this log just in case we do have to go back and debug this at all. So I'm going to copy this line here and I'll add a plus and do a new line. And this one's going to be ID and we'll just do get ID. And I am going to comment this out, but I just wanted to make sure I added that in case I have problems in the future and I want to check to make sure I'm getting the ID properly. So that's fine. Let's close main activity and we'll go back to the comments activity. Now we need to modify our, our get user comment method here because we want to be able to pass in the ID. We want to be able to pass the post ID. So I want to go into here and type in post ID because I have it there. And I'm also going to need it in the other method. Here it is. And I'm going to go down and we're going to change this and add a parameter. So I'm going to go um, just add post. Actually post underscore post underscore ID, that'll be fine. Now we'll go below our dialog box here and we're gonna create the button for actually submitting the reply. So, or submitting the comment. So I'll do button post comment equals button find you by ID, r dot ID dot. I have no idea what that comment or that name is. I think it was post comment. And we need an edit text for the actual comment itself. So we'll go edit text find you ID and r.id.dialog comments was the name of that. And because we're actually inside of a dialog in here, we need to make sure that we reference that. So we go dialog.findViewById and dialog.findViewById. And there we go. Now we attach an onclick listener to our button 
or, or sorry, yeah, our button post comment. So set on click listener. Why didn't that on click listener new on click listener? And I'm just gonna write attempting to post comment just to make sure we know what's going on in our logs. And now at this point, we're gonna need to start doing all the new retrofit stuff. So we haven't made the comments model, the comments posting model for a retrofit yet. So I'm gonna I'm gonna just do a little comment here. So post comment stuff for retrofit. And I'm gonna do something else in this tutorial and we'll do this in the next one. So um, what we will need though, is we're gonna need to recover those session parameters that we stored in the login activity. If you remember down here, once the login was successful, we stored the login parameters. So we stored the username, the mod hash, and the cookie. So in the comments activity, we need to get that information. So we're gonna go down to the very bottom and I'm gonna create a new method. So I'm gonna go private void get session params and it's gonna take in nothing. And we're just gonna create our shared preferences object again. So manager dot get default preferences and then I reference the context and then I create, an, actually we don't need an editor because we're only gonna be getting parameters, we're not setting anything. You only need an editor if you're, if, you're getting, if you're setting things, not getting things. So here we're gonna be getting the mod hash, the username and the cookie from our shared parameters. So let's go up to the top and I wanna create those global variables. I'm gonna go up here, I'm gonna go private string mod hash and private string cookie and private string username. And then down in our get session parameters, we're gonna actually get those things. So I'm gonna go, um, we'll go username first equals preferences dot get string, and the key was at string slash was it session username I believe, and then we'll get a null value for default. This is just gonna be the default right here. Let's just check in um, in strings to make sure that was what it's called. Yep, session username. Okay. Now I'll copy that line and we'll do the same thing for the mod hash and for the cookie. So mod hash and cookie and mod hash and cookie. Now I'm gonna go into the login activity and I'm just gonna grab this log because I don't wanna type it out again. And I just wanna log the fact that I have those things. So there we go. And this needs to change to get session parameters. And I'll just write a couple of comments up here. So get the session params stored in memory from logging in. And I guess I can go to login activity two and write just a couple comments here. Save the session params once login is successful. Okay, so now that will actually set our session parameters. So I can call this method up top um, I'll call it when the activity starts. So I can go, just go up here and go get session params. Um, one problem with this is if we're redirected to comments activity, this won't get called because that's, that's just the way, that's the way the activity lifecycle works. If I navigate to login activity and then finish is called, which we have right here, and we get redirected back to comments activity, this is not gonna get called. So what we actually need to do is uh, insert an override method and it'll be on post I think it's on on post resume or on resume on post resume and we call the super and uh, I'm just gonna log the fact so I'm just gonna resuming activity and then I want to call uh, get session params so that way if I'm redirected to this activity on post resume will be called and the session parameters will be set after we've logged in and I don't like to put override methods at the top of the activity, so I'm gonna put those at the very bottom. I'm gonna put it below this uh, create options menu, and um, that should be, I'm gonna grab this, and I'm gonna put it above the display image method, and there we go. So let's just, uh, I wanna make sure that this is working correctly, so let's run the app, and we're gonna log in, and we'll get redirected back to comments activity, and I wanna make sure that this get session parameters method is actually being called and the session parameters are being set correctly because we're gonna need them when we're um, making comments. So let's go to the app and I'm gonna to go to um, a subreddit and we'll just choose a post. So now we're in the comments section. Now let's go log in. Coding with Mitch and my password. And log 
login, and then now let's watch the log. So we, we got to redirect it back, it said login was successful. Now let's go down to the log, and we can see here we go. Yeah, so on post resume was called, resuming activity, and we can see here our session parameters are being set when we're in comments activity after we've been redirected. So that's great, everything's working the way, the way it should. In the next tutorial, we're gonna go over actually setting up the retrofit stuff for posting comments and replying to other comments. Don't forget to leave a like. Follow me on Twitter for notifications when new tutorials are posted. Subscribe if you haven't already. And thanks for watching.